And now, from 12 Studios, this is News 12 Now. Today is Thursday, March 21st. Welcome to News 12 Now. I'm Kylie Dudman. New on News 12 Now, the Justice Department is suing Apple, accusing it of maintaining smartphone monopoly. The lawsuit was filed in federal court in New Jersey today. In the suit, U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland accuses the company of violating antitrust laws by preventing other companies from morning. offering applications that compete with Apple products. Apple told Fox Apple News that this lawsuit threatens what sets Apple companies. products apart from their competitors. The final two former Mississippi law enforcement officers who pled guilty to a long list of state and federal charges for torturing two black men will be sentenced today. In a total, six white law enforcement officers known as part of the Goon Squad pled guilty to torturing two black men last year in a home in Rankin County, Mississippi. Former Rankin County Deputy Brett McAlpin and former Richland Police Officer Joshua Hartfield are set for sentencing. The victims, their attorneys and supporters could be seen heading into court this morning as they will listen for the final two sentences to be announced. The United Nations Security Council could vote this week on the U.S. resolution on Gaza. Now that's according to a diplomat familiar with the matter. The resolution calls for an immediate and sustained ceasefire along with the release of all remaining hostages. In the past, the U.S. vetoed multiple resolutions calling for ceasefires. But on Wednesday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Israel has the right to defend itself, but protecting civilians and getting them humanitarian aid also needs to be a focus. Even if the resolution passes, Israel and Hamas still have to work out their own terms of a ceasefire. Those negotiations are ongoing. Well, turning to weather now, we're going to have a bit of a rainy day, but yes. meteorologist Brady Black yeah. is with us. It's not going to be severe, though. That's right. Yeah, we're not in a severe risk. I'll go over that a little bit later, Kylie. But right now, we're kind of taking a break from the rain. You can see on Doppler 12, not much out there, just a few light showers in, uh, in and around Ada, Pontotoc County. And if we go to max radar over the last six hours, you can see just about everybody already got a little bit of rain, really not much on the rainfall totals. But I know this morning there were raindrops on my car and then it was blue skies as I came into work. So not the case right now. We're going to some of our tower cams. You can still see plenty of clouds in the sky because we are not done with the rain and even TMC looking extra overcast right here down in Sherman. Temperatures though, Definitely south of the Red River, we're seeing temperatures climb up to the mid 60s, even a 69 all the way out in Paris. So a little warmer in some spots, but that will come down when we see some of that rain come in later today. Wind speeds very calm. One of the reasons why we're not going to be dealing with severe weather, but future cast showing we're not done with the rain just yet. Some more storms rolling in later this evening. All right, thank you, Brady. Well, we're learning new details about alleged dangerous hazing by fraternities and sororities at the University of Maryland. Several Greek chapters are accused of abusing students, and some of those students ended up being hospitalized. Natalie Brand has the story. Allegations of potentially life-threatening hazing have shaken the University of Maryland campus as five fraternities are under investigation. I've been doing this work for 35 years and have never ever done a move like this before. The allegations came in uh, over a six day period and some of them were anonymous. The allegations revealed in new court documents include fraternity members being forced to consume urine and live fish, others allegedly burned with cigarettes and torches and physically assaulted. One student who reported anonymously to the university said a fellow student passed out after being forced to drink straight vodka Another was reportedly treated for hypothermia after being outside for hours. It's definitely an open secret on campus. Lucy Taylor, a former UMD sorority member, says she was hazed during her experience. The Greek system creates this culture of secrecy where no one will report. Nationally, the group Stop Hazing estimates 55% of college students involved in clubs or teams have experienced hazing. It's estimated more than 100 students have died from hazing since 2000. Professor Elizabeth Allen says too few students report the issue. Why is it so important to report hazing? Reporting hazing is part of accountability. It sends a message uh, about the expectations that we have for uh, community behavior and for well-being of the members of a campus community. 
The group Stop Hazing is pushing for federal legislation. 44 states, including Maryland, have anti-hazing laws on the books, but they vary greatly. As for this campus, the University of Maryland says it's establishing expanded ways to report hazing. Natalie Brand, CBS News, College Park, Maryland. President Joe Biden has canceled another $5.8 billion of student loan debt. This latest round of relief impacts nearly 78,000 public sector workers through the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Qualifying borrowers include teachers, social workers, some nurses and doctors, and government lawyers who have made at least 10 years of monthly payments. If you qualify to have your student loan debt canceled, you will be receiving an email next week from President Biden. To date, Biden has canceled nearly $144 billion of federal student loan debt for nearly 4 million borrowers. And once again, it's crunch time in Washington as Congress is up against another government funding deadline. Lawmakers have until Friday night to approve spending limits or part of the government will shut down. Fox News correspondent Rebecca Castor has the latest on the negotiations. In the wee hours of Thursday morning, Congress released more than a thousand pages of government funding legislation. But there's little time left for lawmakers to pass it to avoid a partial government shutdown Friday, putting operations at the Departments of Defense, Labor, Health and Human Services, Education and others on the line. We're talking about how to expedite it as quickly as possible, but also allow all the members to have an adequate time to review the legislation. House Speaker Mike Johnson will likely weigh the House rule requiring that members have 72 hours to review bills before voting on them. But that still leaves the upper chamber, and at least one senator is already threatening to hold up the legislation. It's sad to say, when we look at the blame for the debt, that the blame goes to both parties. The legislation includes over $1 trillion in bipartisan spending measures. Republicans negotiated more spending for U.S. defense and border security and cut off funding for a U.N. agency providing humanitarian relief to Palestinians in Gaza after claims employees participated in the October 7th attack in Israel. Meanwhile, Democrats are happy about lowering child care costs and blocking cuts to federal DEI programs. These aren't the bills that Democrats would have written on our own. They are the result of very tough negotiations. We've had to stick to some very difficult top lines and fight off literally hundreds of Republican poison pills. But the spending negotiations won't end here. Lawmakers are still reviewing President Biden's budget proposal for 2025, which includes tax hikes for billionaires and tax breaks for families. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. H&R Block is suing the Federal Trade Commission over its tax ads investigation. The lawsuit was filed in federal court yesterday. It argues that the agency's use of internal administration law judges violates the Constitution. Last month, the FTC filed a complaint accusing H&R Block of falsely advertising its tax prep products as free. The FTC also claims the company offered more expensive online products and then allegedly deleted the previously entered data to desensitize downgrading. H&R Block denies these claims. The lawsuit contends that the FTC's internal judges who hear cases lack proper oversight. The stock market saw a big time boost with positive news coming from the Federal Reserve. This comes as the President Biden campaigns on his economic policies. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has the details from New York. It was a good day on Wall Street Wednesday. The Dow, NASDAQ and S&P 500 all seeing a boost. It comes hours after the Federal Reserve announced borrowing costs will remain steady for now while indicating it's on track for three cuts later this year. Inflation has eased substantially, while the labor market has remained strong. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says the labor market is strong and wages are up. On the campaign trail, President Biden is taking credit for the recent economic success. At a speech in Arizona, the president touted plans for more semiconductor production and more jobs in the U.S. Since I took office, America's had the strongest growth of any major economy in the world. Nearly 15 million new jobs, the longest stretch of unemployment under 4% in 50 years. 450. Growth is strong. But many blame Biden for high prices and say the picture isn't as rosy as he's painting it. 
From the gas station to the grocery store, American families are hurting. Gas prices are once again on the rise. And some worry about the impact of more government spending and higher taxes could have on the progress. All this spending that they're doing to quote unquote help the economy, help businesses, help the consumer. How about you guys get out of the way? Let us spend our own money. Let us invest our own money and therefore that will take care of itself. And so what if we get a little inflation out of it? It's still unclear when a potential rate cut would come. The Fed will meet again at the end of April. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Well, that's all for this afternoon of News 12 Now. Be sure to tune into News 12 at 5, 6, and 10 tonight for a complete wrap of what happened today in Texoma and beyond. Thanks for watching and have a terrific Thursday.